Welcome back to the Mind Body Project and welcome to the 100th episode of the Mind Body Project. 100 weeks, um, we've shown up every week uh, to bring you the Mind Body Project. Had some amazing guests over these 100 episodes, have shared a lot of uh, content over these 100 episodes, hours and hours and hours of content of things to hopefully uh, give you things to think about. Hopefully I brought you guests to, uh, that share their stories that, that maybe gives you insight to their life, but also an insight of how um, they handle life. How do they manage life through their struggles, through their triumphs, all those different things. And so today is all about just celebrating 100 episodes. Um, I, I celebrate because for me, it means 100 weeks in a row I have uh, come up with content or had guests um, to bring um, over the over those hundred episodes and showing up being consistent um, is one of the things it's always the um, always the advice I give when somebody says you know I want to do this or I want to do that I want to live a healthy lifestyle I want to um, reach these goals I want to do these different things what's your advice I always say be consistent and so I try to model that in my life and through this podcast, through the Mind Body Project, I hope um, that is one way that I've been able to model consistency of every week showing up to bring content, um, new content every single week um, to share with you. So I just really wanted to kind of talk about the last hundred episodes. You know where I can go over every single episode? That's a lot of episodes, a lot of topics that I covered over the last um, hundred episodes. That's, I mean, we're just two weeks shy of two years of to, no, my math isn't good. It'd be four weeks, four episodes of making two years straight. But I just want to share some of the things over the last hundred episodes that I have have really learned. Um, some of the things that I've struggled with, some of the successes I've had, and I just wanted to share those um, with you. Um, you know, one of the things is, and is sometimes, believe it or not, it's hard to come up with a topic week after week. Um, it, it's hard to find a guest. It's hard to think of, you know, who would, who would fit um, what I want to share with my listeners on the Mind Body Project. Um, it comes sometimes it's what, what lesson do I want to share this week on the Mind Body Project? And so it's coming up with topics sometimes. And when I, you know, when I started the podcast two, uh, almost two years ago, 100 episodes ago, um, it didn't really dawn on me. I just thought, you know, I have a bunch of ideas. I'll go ahead and put them out there. But what happens week after week when those ideas start getting harder and harder to come by? It, it, it is what I found is the challenge for me is that I have to always be learning. I have to always be learning and trying new, new things, new ideas, and so I can share those with you each week. Um, because I never, I never like to share something that I haven't tried or uh, I'm always the biggest guinea pig, especially when being a trainer for the last 16 years, when it comes to exercises and diet and all those, I'm the guinea pig. I'll try, I'll do anything. Um, I'll, I'll try it just to see before I tell a client, hey, this would be good. Um, you know, uh, probably uh, a couple years ago, I decided to do the half marathon at Cowtown in Fort Worth. And I had a new idea, you know, typically the week, the, the plans, if you look online, they're about 12 weeks long. And I thought, what if there was a way to decrease that? Um, because when you decrease that training period, you decrease um, chances of injury, um, the amount of miles, and all those things in motivation, uh, all those things that go into the extended plan of training. And so I was kind of sharing this with my wife, Kim, and she, and I said, I just gotta find somebody to do it. You know, I, I want to take that 12 week plan, bring it down to eight weeks and just do time-based versus mileage. It's a lot of 12 week uh, half marathon plans are mileage. I wanted to take it down to time. I wanted to do it all indoors, except for a long run um, once a week, which was outdoors. And I wanted to see how that could translate into the half marathon, how it could translate um, into making it, um, speed, all those different things. I was telling Kim about it, and she said, and I said, I just need to find somebody to do it. She goes, why are you looking for somebody to do it? I said, well, I don't really want to do it. She said, well, if you want to know if it works or not, you need to do it. And so I was like, it's not really the answer I wanted to hear, so I said fine. Uh, so I did it a couple years ago, and and 
you know, did it again uh, last year just and tweaked some things to see how some things worked, and it, it worked better. So I always like to try things. I didn't want to try it that time, but she talked me into, uh, I want to, I'd like to try things before I suggest those. Um, to my clients, the same as there's no different with the Mind Body Project. The things I share with you each week are things that I've tried that have come up in my life um, that I've, you know, had to go out and search and learn and, and apply. And how does, you know, and just like that half marathon uh, training plan that I utilized that I came up with, I had to do, I had to tweak it this last year. I'm going to tweak it again next year. And that's the same thing with the things that I, that I share each week is that they have to be tweaked to according to your life. How do they work? How do they adjust? Um, well, they, right when I started, I did about had about four episodes in. It was just me um, sharing uh, different lessons, and then I interviewed my dad, and then I had a uh, another interview, and and maybe she was my second interview, Leanne Hart, and and I've shared the story before, but it has been, and I think it was, I think it was the first interview I did after my dad. Um, and it was the best piece of advice I'd ever gotten. Um, I was pulling up to her uh, ranch. I was going down a road, about to pull up to her driveway. I was on the phone with Kim, and I said, I am so nervous. Like, I am so nervous. Like, just, um, Leanne's just a sweet lady, and, and I was just nervous to interview her, to talk to her. And, and I'd only talked to her on the phone, and just briefly, and I was just a nervous wreck. And, and I don't know if she, she knows that or not, but I was. And, and I was talking to Kim, and, and I was about to pull through her, her gate. And, and I told Kim, I said, I'm just so nervous. I mean, I have all these questions planned. And she said, just follow the conversation. Don't, don't worry about getting all the questions in. Just follow the conversation. And so uh, Leah and I started the, the interview, had, had all my questions written out, you know, as, as I do each time. And um, and we just started talking, and, and we started to have a conversation, and she'd say something, and I'd want to dive into that a little bit more. And I thought, oh, you know, I think people would really connect with this. I think this is something that people really want to hear, that they need to hear. And so we, I'd, I'd ask her more about that in our life and ask her more about this. And, and, and you know, we, over an hour, and we, we talked, and, and I looked down, and I had not, hadn't looked at my paper at all. And I was like, wow. But as I looked down, I covered everything that I wanted to talk about uh, without coming out and asking. So that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned over 100 episodes is uh, I always have key points. I don't necessarily have questions. I have key points that I would like that I think would be interesting. I'd like to find out. A lot of times, uh, my guest, it's things that I'm just interested about and I want to know about. And so when they have those things, I think, well, what about this? What about that? And that has been the biggest, and as and as it transferred into um, my other podcast, my hometown, um, is all about my hometown. And as I interview people, that's what I do each time. I just follow the conversation. We I get them started, and I have some questions, and and I might ask a question about this, and it, they lead into a story, and then I think they say something. Oh, I'd like to know about that, and, and I think everybody else would like to know about that. And so we, I just follow the conversation. It's the best advice that I've ever gotten. Um, of course, my wife gave it to me, and I listened, and that's what I've been doing every time I have a guest on, is to, uh, just follow the conversation I find. And so it's not, I hate to even call it an interview. Um, on, I love, <laughs> I, on Sundays, uh, I watch the Today Show with Willie Geist, and uh, about halfway through his show, he has um, Sunday sit-down, where he interviews a guest, and he... Um, you know, he says you can find the full interview on his podcast, and I always like to tell him I call it to say it's it's his uh, podcast because that's the way it sounds. But anyhow, it's kind of goofy. But I always think it's called Sunday Sit Down, where they just have a conversation. That's what they do, and that's always been my goal. Is I even I, that's why I hate to call an interview. I just it's a conversation, and when I have guests on, I say oh, I'm so nervous. It's not you know I don't do that, and I say it's just I have this little bitty camera and I have a microphone that you're going to be talking into. You won't even notice it. It's just going to be you and I having a conversation. And, and they're nervous, but once we start talking for the first couple minutes, they just loosen up and they go, oh, it's just a conversation. It's just me sharing my story. It's just me sharing uh, my life. Um, so that's, that's what I try to do each, each time. Something else I've learned is, um, you know, it's kind of like I have to work at it. 
at, at doing a podcast because you know what? I have all these people listening and, you know, wanting to watch and listen to my podcast each week. And you know what happens as time goes on? Those numbers start to go down. They go down, they go down. They go, oh, what am I doing wrong? And so, I, so it, it encourages me that I need to learn new techniques. Do I need to become a better communicator? Do I need to be have a better camera presence? Do I need to do some different things with my voice? Do I need to have more engaging topics, more um, ask different questions of my guest and engage a little bit different? So it makes me think more of what should I do different? Do I, my communication skills need to be better? Do I need to hone in on those? Um, so it just helps me be better. And I don't take it as, well, you know, they, they just don't care. They, they don't want to improve their mind. They don't want to worry about their body. No, it's, it's what can I do better to get those listeners back, to get those viewers back. So it's something I've learned that just because you have a podcast doesn't mean people are going to listen. How do you attract those people? How do you attract those listeners? When I had my first gym in 2004, I honestly thought that you unlocked the door and everybody would come in. And I probably thought that a little bit with podcasting. I thought, well, why wouldn't everybody want to hear? It's not the case. There has to be something that, that, that catches their ear that they want to listen to. Like, now why do I want to listen to him? Why do I want to listen to that guest? What do they have to offer that I could utilize? And that's what it is. Why do we listen to podcasts? Why do we listen to um, books, or books on tape, on audio? Why do we read? Why do we watch a movie? Because they have something that hooked us that we want to be entertained. We want to be educated. We want to enjoy. Whatever it is, it has to have that hook that catches us. Uh, you know, in you know, 100 episodes beginning of this year, um, January, I think it was January, I'm in February, but January, I think, I think it was the first this year, I started not only recording the podcast, um, audio, but also started videoing it to put on YouTube. That has been quite the challenge to uh, get both of them done, figure it out, how do you do it, how do you edit, and I've learned a lot, and that's just been in the last um, 25, 26 episodes of this year. And so that, that's been an experience of now, it, you know, just recording, video recordings, now I have to set up a light and have to kind of set up a, a studio per se. And, and it's a lot of work to get everything set up to be, because I don't leave it up all the time. So it takes a lot of work. And so then I have to remember, oh, I'm, I'm on camera. I just can't um, use my voice. I have to also look presentable. Uh, my kids, they got me this great shirt for Father's Day. It says the Mind Body Project. So now I'm official. Um, I have an actual uh, attire that if, you know, if you're watching, you see, see the Mind Body Project logo on my shirt. Uh, so, so that's kind of neat. What, what else have I learned over 100 episodes? And, you know, I go back to, oh man, only three or four or five people watched it on YouTube. Sometimes maybe 10 or 20. Man, I only had 100 people download my, this episode. I only, I only had 25 people download this episode. And sometimes that can get me down, um, just like it, it could all of us. But I have to remind myself that my goal is to impact the world. And maybe that one person, and, and I've been downloaded all over the world, um, all over different countries, from China to Russia to England to Australia, um, all, all over. And maybe that one person I impacted is in a different country. Maybe that person I impacted is in this country. Maybe this, the person I impacted is in my town. And isn't it really, if I want to impact the world, don't I record this and do this each week for the one person? For the one that it's going to impact. And I'm not sure which one that is. Who's going to listen to it that's going to, who's going to maybe not listen to it this week? Who's going to listen to it six months from now? Who's going to find me a year from now? And find the episode that speaks to them, that changes their life, that they listen to it. You know what? I took that one principle. I, you know, I listened to one of your guests, and, and they were talking about their struggles and the, and the things that were going on in their life and how they came out of it. And I thought, I'm there. And if they can do it, I can do it. What if it's for that one person? And this episode may, may not reach that one person until a year from now. may not reach that person until two years from now. Being out almost um, two years now, coming up on um, 104 episodes, we're at our 100th episode. Maybe somebody just is now tuning in and goes back to one of those episodes from two years ago and goes, wow, that really, that really resonates with me. 
I have to remind myself of, and that's, those are the things that um, you have, I've had to learn over 100 episodes. And you might probably, if you listen to every episode, hope you have. Hope, you, hope you've listened to every episode. If not, I encourage you to go back. There's some great topics, great guests. I encourage you to go back and listen to some of those. Is that you probably have heard me repeat things over and over and over. Think, why does he repeat it over and over and over? But do you know what? Maybe somebody is hearing this for the first time. Maybe they're hearing it for the third or fourth time. You know, I think it's like seven or nine times we have to hear something repeat it before we catch on to it. Before we go, ah, maybe that's an idea. Maybe that's a thing I want to do. So if I want to make that impact, I have to keep repeating because I never know when the one is listening. Or maybe you've listened to every episode and this is the 11th time you've heard me say whatever it is I've said, you know, this time it catches you. It catches you the right point in life that it catches you. And you go, yep, I, I've been hearing this forever, but it just now clicked that I can put it into practice. Another thing it, I've learned over the 100 episodes after training, personal training for uh, 16 years, I have a lot of clients say, you can probably count in your sleep. And, and it kind of can be that way. Um, I can have a conversation uh, with my client and still keep counting my head. Um, it's just something that, it's not something I ever tried to do. It's just something that kind of came about um, over the years of talking and counting and just it just kind of happened. So for me, I have to find, you know, it's just like any time in a job, in a career. We kind of go, you know, I could kind of do this with one eye closed, both eyes closed. Um, you know, of course, I can't do it with both eyes closed because i got to make sure the weight doesn't fall on the client. But there's, there's days when it's just like, you know, Groundhog Day. We're kind of going through this again. And doing a podcast, doing the Mind Body Project, gives me a creative outlet. Gives me a creative outlet to, to, to speak to people, to come up with new content, new ideas, new lessons. And so it helps me be creative. And it's what it does, too, is open minds because a lot of times I share things that I've learned through experience. And so I try to put um, an experience that I've had with a lesson I want to teach, with a lesson I want to share. Because isn't it more interesting when we go, how did that apply to your life? And is what it's done for me over these 100 episodes is when I see things or have things happen in my life, how does that apply? Is there, a, is there something I've taught, um, something I've shared, is there something I've learned that I can apply to that experience and then share that with my audience? Because surely I'm not the only one. Surely I'm not the only one that has experienced that. And so many of us, as, as I talk to clients, as I talk to uh, business owners, as I talk to married couples, as I talk to uh, all sorts of people, I find out that everybody thinks that their that their problem is unique to them. And I'm here to share with you that your problem, I promise you, is not unique to you. Somebody somewhere has experienced that and had those issues. And maybe it's it's one of the things that I share that you go, I've had that. I thought I was the only one that experienced that. And you go, I'm not, thank goodness, I'm not a goofball or weird or dorky. Um, I have a um, 360 effect uh, Zoom meeting every Monday. And it, it, it's, a, it's a place to be safe and it's a place that we um, connect and we talk about it and we can be honest. And we're honest in there and, and people say all the time, I thought that was just me, I love your honesty. Because I feel that same way. I, I thought I was the only one. You're not. And so this, is, this has been able to give me an opportunity to share those experiences that I've had with, with people to know you're not alone. There's other people that have experienced the same thing you're experiencing. It, it, it's not odd. It's not weird. It's just maybe nobody talks about it in your circle. But you're not alone. Somebody somewhere has experienced the same thing. And another thing I've learned in 100 episodes is I learned, I love to, and I enjoy to motivate people, and and by the things that I share and the experiences I've had, I love to just share that because I think I can't, I can't talk to everybody. I can't, you know, clients, you know, my time is one-on-one. -on -one. I can only have so much time. So how can I expand my reach? And, and I love that this podcast has allowed me to do that. It's, it's what they call evergreen, where it, it's always out there. It's always 
going. Um, you know, I can be training a client, I can be asleep, and somebody can be listening to my words, they can be watching my video, they can be doing these things, and I can be touching lives, touching people, sharing my experiences when I'm doing something else and when, I, when my time's occupied or um, I'm taking a nap or I'm reading, whatever it is, I can, I can share that. Another thing I've learned over the 100 episodes is how to become a better listener and better communicator. As I'm sitting across or next to a guest, and, and I, I feel so fortunate to do that because there's not many times in our lives where we get an hour, hour and a half to spend with somebody that we just want to find out about their life. It's not anybody we're necessarily in a relationship with. We not, may not be friends. Uh, we may just kind of know of each other. But I get to spend time with those people, those guests, and just listen to them. Without any, any distractions, I get their time. There's, there's no phones going off. There's nobody bothering. I get their time. And that's the most valuable thing we have, and I, and I, and I take that so uh, heavily because I think it's so important that they're giving me their time. They'll never get that hour, hour and a half back, but they chose to spend it with me. So uh, to be respectful, I need to listen. I need to open my ears, listen to what they're saying, and try to... Um, expand upon what they're talking about. So maybe there's somebody that can connect with something if I ask a question, or maybe sometimes it's just for me. Maybe it's like, man, I, man, I needed to hear that. I needed that from them. And it has um, given me the opportunity over these 100 episodes to do that. And 100 episodes, I never thought on day one um, that it'd be 100 episodes. And I really didn't think, quite honestly. I just... Um, finally got over the fear and hit the play button, a record button, and spoke into a microphone about what was on my, my mind, on my, uh, on my heart, and hopefully not as many ums and uh as, we've, as I've grown over these 100 episodes, gotten used to speaking into microphones, talking on camera, and sharing uh, what I have to share, the lessons I have to learn, and, and I've, be, I've learned to become a little more vulnerable because vulnerability, we connect with that. So many times we put that up the shield of armor that we're tough, we're, um, we don't want to any, let anybody in. And these 100 episodes have showed me that we need to be a little more vulnerable because there's people out there that can connect with that, that, that are experiencing the same things we are, that if we can be a little more vulnerable, they can go, wow, that's, that's me. And if he or she's struggling with that, then maybe I can get past that too. So it's, it's helped me um, to understand that and to be a little more vulnerable. So uh, I'm just looking forward to, I'm, I'm just excited about uh, what I've learned over the 100 episodes. I hope uh, that I've impacted you in some way over these 100 episodes. And I, and, I, and I encourage you that if you haven't listened to episode, go back and find an episode that you haven't listened to. And we're going to have a lot of great new content coming up. Um, we're going to have a lot of great guests coming up in, the, in this next year. And just to share um, their stories, and I'm going to share more of my stories. But to share more of my stories, I have to have more experience. So it encourages me to go out and do things and, and have those experiences so I can share with them, share with the lessons you've learned. So tune in for the next 100 episodes because these 100 episodes have uh, really encouraged, inspired me, and have helped me grow. So I hope they have helped and inspired and motivated you to grow and I hope I have been able to help you grow and impacted your world in some way. So thanks for taking a little time to join me today and as I tell my wife came every night before I go to bed, it's bottom of the night, double A, out. <laughs>